All right, hello guys. This is uh, Matt with Elevate Glass, and I'm sitting here with Mr. Terry Sharp, and we have a few questions for this guy. Uh, the first question I have for you is, uh, how did you get into blowing glass? Uh, I lived in Eugene, Oregon. Back, uh, I moved there in '96, and uh, was partying with some friends, and met a couple glass blowers, and I got to like take a guy to work and sit and watch him blow glass. I'd always been fascinated with pipes and just never knew anyone that did it. I actually met some people that did it. I got to drive them to work to like, you know, you had to like prove yourself to get into the industry back then. You yeah, you had to you yeah. had to work your way in as so a true like, apprenticeship right, I'll back then. I'll take you to work for a month to sit and watch you blow glass, and then hopefully you'll give me some knowledge and help me set up. So yeah, that happened in, yeah, Eugene, Oregon, 96, 97. Eugene, Oregon in 96, 97. So I was uh, 16. I was still in high school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like 20, 21, just okay. out of high school. From Indiana, a bunch of buddies moved to Oregon. And just because we liked Eugene, we're all deadheads, did Grateful Dead tour forever. Loved the West Coast, loved Oregon. So I thought I'd go there. Didn't know it was the Mecca for glass blowing. The, the Mecca for Wooks is what you mean there, <laughs> yeah, dude. Right? For sure. We all have our moments. Well, we do, definitely. <laughs> so are you still currently out of Oregon? I know you were no. just in Colorado, correct? Uh, I left Oregon in 2000, around 2000, 2001. Okay. Uh, I went back to the Midwest. I had some things I uh, legally I had to take care of back there. So I went back there and uh, started focusing playing music. So. Uh, glass blowing was like secondary for a long time while I did music stuff. Okay. Always, have always loved it, always did it. But where are you blowing glass out of now? Uh, right now I'm back in Indiana, I have a studio, and then I'm working in Inglewood, Colorado also. Inglewood, kind of going Colorado, back and forth. okay. Yeah, my family is in Indiana and my dad got sick, so it's kind of just helping him out. Kind of taking a break from Colorado, go to Indiana, chill, have a nice studio there. And then if I want to, I can go back and work. Back yeah, you're there. working out of what, Mean Screens up there in Denver? Uh, no, uh, uh, Worm Studio. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I try to get by there, but uh, that, that shop's definitely a, a really nice shop. Yeah. So, who do you look up to in the glass game? Uh, I look up to the, the pioneers that, when I started, were doing it, like Bob Snodgrass and his whole crew. Uh, a few artists from that first batch, uh, Brian Padilla and Yvonne Padilla. Yes. Uh, seeing their pieces when I was like in a parking lot at a dead show or a fish show, really, I was just fucking blown away. It was like, this is amazing. I want to be able to do this. And, uh, you know, just that's, you know, those artists like Jason Lee, Marcel, well, you know, all those guys that were pushing the boundaries right in the beginning. When you're talking 96, you're talking about times when color was kind of yeah. hard to come by. Yeah, we had very few you know, colors. There was only, you had to know somebody that had the color and right. work with them before right. well, the North you were Star, able to North Star had, stuff, you right? know, like 20 colors that they were doing. Definitely not uh, a green. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we yeah, all right. know about you that You had to one. get that from fuming. Like, yes. Then you had to learn the fume game to get the white, red, orange. You could get the whole rainbow palette out of fuming. I learned that right away. Yes. And, you know, I carry that still. I still do tons of fuming because I should So, be awesome. you like fuming is, uh, what is one of your favorite techniques?